Graham, thanks for coming along today. Uh, we're going to be talking about your new expansion, Tess of Honor Sengoku. Um, so, just in case people don't know who you are and what you do, <laughs> if you could start off kind of telling us your life story and how this <laughs> came about. Uh, okay, um, well, uh, I'm Graham. I run a company called Grey for Now Games, uh, which I essentially set up in order to publish Test of Honor. Um, we launched second edition uh, June last year, uh, and it's going really well, but um, I'm doing it all myself. <laughs> um, it's a, a proper one man band. I do all the, the design and the writing, but I'm also packing boxes and sending out orders to people, so uh, it's just me. <laughs> Sounds fun. Um, so you've kind of come from there and now you've got this first expansion on the way, yep. uh, which kind of changes up the period a little bit and things like that. Well, the, the game's always been set in the, the Sengu, Sengoku period, um, which is the, the age of warring clans where there was a massive civil war in Japan and all the clans started fighting each other. Um, but the, the new game kind of focuses in on, on those elements a bit more closely. Um, so uh, it's packed with a load of new different stuff. So we've got, um, there's 20 new scenarios, there's new weapons types, there's rules for burning buildings, um, lots of fun stuff. But the big, the meat of the book is about the clans. Uh, and it allows you to differentiate the different clans and have rules for your specific, your favourite clan that you want to represent. Um, so we're covering 12 of the most famous clans um, from the really very honourable ones to the, some really nasty ones. Um, uh, and uh, you'll be able to have unique rules for each one of those. Um, uh, and the way you play is you choose your clan, obviously, at the beginning of the game, um, but you also choose an ally um, from one of the other clans, um, which will give you access to some of their rules as well. So there's lots of combinations possible. Right, so this was almost like a chance to get a bit more granular and really dig into those different aspects that epitomise their approach to warfare or their approach yeah. to that sort yes, of thing. Yes, absolutely. So... Um, you've got the, let's say, the, the Shimazu clan were, were one of the very honourable traditional clans who, so the rules bring out that, that aspect in them, kind of full frontal assaults, um, no, nothing, nothing dodgy and dishonourable at all. Um, uh, some of the clans are famous for adopting particular weapons, so you've got the Takeda who were famous for their cavalry, Oda were famous for adopting muskets very quickly, um, so so you can emphasise those aspects. Uh, and there's some of the the more unpleasant clans that were into bribery and uh, underhand tactics. So it depends what it, whatever you fancy, um, you can you can focus on that as well as a, a little bit of something else with your allies as well. So are the allies actually represented as alternative models on the tabletop or can that also be just a, an alliance that you determine and will simply affect the way that you play with your, your well um, the the easy thing to do if you don't want to buy any more models at all is just to say okay those four guys are going to be my allies um, but it's a but it is a good hobby opportunity to to paint up some new guys in some different colors uh, and have all the iconography on your models um, and specifically set aside those those guys to be your allies if you want. Sure. Um, there's also we've also included if you if you don't specifically want one of the clans there's there's also the the Ikowiki, which is the the warrior monks and the peasant rebels. Um, there's a uh, Ronin um, if you want your your guys who are just masterless wanderers who fight for money. Um, uh, ninjas, uh, if that's if that's your bag, um, or or simply bandits, um, which are all kind of in part of the game, um, and you can imagine not any of those at some point for whatever reason fighting for one of the clans um, as allies or just mixed in with your main force, however you want.
Sure. Uh, and have you got new models on the way to represent some of these new clans as well? Um, what we've got is um, uh, there's a variety of new things on the way. Um, there's some um, Iki peasants, which are coming out very soon uh, to reinforce the so high monks. Um, uh, We've also been working on some of the new weapons that are, which are included in the book. So uh, we've got uh, over here on the table, uh, we've got some guys with a zutsu, which are a big, really heavy musket. It was virtually a, a handheld cannon, um, uh, which is a much heavier version of the musket. So we've got them coming out too. I mean, I noticed you said handheld cannon with quite a lot of sort of glee in your voice. There. <laughs> is, it, is it things like that that get your juices flowing as a designer and give you new inspiration to take these on? Um, well, it's just, I, I mean, I've done a lot more research this time round. Um, for the, the first time we wrote the game, I had a general knowledge mainly based on, on, on uh, samurai films. Um, uh, this time I've actually kind of done a lot more actual historical research and reading. Um, about all the different clans and the, the stories and uh, there's just a variety of very unusual <laughs> unusual weapons, interesting stories and it's all come out. Um, uh, so yeah, I found that very interesting and, and it's inspired a lot of what's gone into the book. Would you, would you say that's changed your approach as either a game designer or the, the artistic developer for the range? Or? Um, I don't know if it's changed the approach. I think I've always tried to uh, make make the game rules and the mechanics really reflect what's what you're trying to represent. Um, I think that's a, that's an important approach. Uh, it has it's been very inspirational in terms of, so for example, there's there's twenty new scenarios in the book. Uh, and pretty much all of those are inspired by the characters and the stories of the different clans. Um, so each each of the scenarios is kind of based on one of the clans. It doesn't mean you have to have that clan to play it, um, but each one is inspired by by a specific clan. So for the Takeda that I mentioned before, with their all their cavalry, there's a there's a swift attack scenario. Um, the uh, the the Hojo clan, for example, uh, they were they were kind of upstarts at the at the very beginning of the period. They they weren't a ruling clan at all. In fact, the Hojo clan didn't exist at all. Um, the the head of the clan decided to overthrow his master uh, and call himself Hojo, which was a ancient clan name from from hundreds of years before. So to give himself an air of respectability. Um, he then went and uh, befriended his, the guy in the neighbouring castle, and then when they were out hunting together, he murdered him too and took his, his castle and gradually expanded into the whole of the province. Uh, so there's lots of stories like that. So, um, so the scenario that's been inspired by that one is called Tea and Treachery, and it starts with the two sides, the, all the characters from the two armies sitting down at a tea ceremony before it all kicks off and you're bringing in your reinforcements from the, from the sides and, the, and that's how it works. So that's just one example of, of how, the, how the history is, is inspiring all the, all the gaming. And is, is that where you think maybe for you the smaller skirmish kind of rules fit? more with your design aesthetic you can get into those kinds of more personal scenarios yeah i think there's uh there's obviously lots of big famous battles uh in the sengoku history but the uh, test of honor allows you to explore smaller little stories um because you've got maybe 10 12 models on each side um you can you can obviously do stuff that's inspired by the big military battles, which had 10,000 10, people on each side. Um, but you just know there must have been all these untold little stories and skirmishes and oh, this 
lone guy and his two friends were sent to send this message and got ambushed and all these little interesting stories just uh, uh, that, that you can reflect on the table and choose which combination of models you want. Um, and it, for me, it brings it back to that more uh, making it a cinematic story rather than a purely historically, purely military story. Yeah, for sure. Um, so in terms of like getting into the specifics a bit more of what you've put into this new book, what would you say are kind of the, if, if I was to go, what are your unique selling points like and why? What makes you really like those elements? What, what would you bring up? Um, well, uh, I, can, I can explain first of all how the, the clan, clan rules work in a bit more detail. Uh, but a few of the other bits, uh, the other bits first. So there's a, we've introduced rules for burning buildings, uh, which allows loads more fun scenarios. Um, uh, so from simply one side defending the village while the other side's trying to burn it down, um, but also more complicated things. So maybe some bandits are trying to raid the village and steal their stuff so they set fire to it in order to create chaos um, uh, there's already rules in the game for uh, attacking a force which doesn't know you're you're coming uh, uh, unaware rules um, so we've introduced the idea that if a building on, is on fire then all those guys who normally just wander around randomly because they don't know they're under attack are going to move towards the burning building uh, so, in theory, that allows you to satellite the building over here in order to sneak around the other side. Um, so, there's opportunities and, uh, again, it just creates more storytelling, which uh, for me is the, the real driver. Um, uh, I've, there's, uh, I've, I've even chucked in rules for, for cannons. Um, again, for with a 10-person aside, uh, game cannons aren't a standard part of Testamana really um, but I spotted that quite a few people on Facebook had, had got their samurai cannons so we decided to include that as well um, uh, there's there's the new rules for the different weapons so we've got the the heavy muskets that I mentioned there's uh, some new ninja weapons like tiger claws uh, they had um, kind of weighted chains that they could spin around and kind of entrap people. Uh, and there was other unusual weapons. There's a one called a, a, a jute, which was like a kind of a metal bar, kind of sword-shaped metal bar with a, a hook on, which was designed to trap the enemy blades. Um, so we put lots of things like that in. Um, and then there's the main the main event, which is the the clan rules themselves. Um, so, how it works is that each clan has four different abilities that you can choose from. Um, and at the start of your given battle, you choose two of those abilities that you're going to use. Uh, these could be things like. Uh, a bonus for a particular weapon that the clan was more more favoured. Um, so let's go back. So the uh, the older clan, for example, we've mentioned already, get a little bonus with their muskets. Um, the Takeda clan will get a bonus for horseback troops. Uh, and each clan has their own unique one of those. And then there's other things like attacking unaware warriors will be a, an underhand dishonourable bonus um, for those clans. There's those that trained harder and more skilled, so they might get extra skill cards, things like that. Um, so you choose two of your four at the start of the game. Uh, and then you also choose one skill from your ally. So you can have three to start with and obviously that gives you lots of combinations to try and see what works for you um, and then as you play the way these abilities are triggered um, we're, we're putting two new tokens into the bag which when you're drawing your action tokens to to, to run the game 
Uh, and when those are drawn out, you choose which of those three abilities you're going to use at that point. Um, and I went with that approach because I didn't want to... There's already inevitably a lot to remember as you play. Um, you've got all your basic rules, you've got all your skill cards coming out during the game. Uh, so I didn't want to just create a whole extra layer of complexity throughout the game. Um, so what this means is you, you just think about those extra bits at that specific point of the game when the, when the tokens come out. Um, and it allows you to, at that point, thinking, okay, you switch on to those rules, which one's the best at this point. Um, Maybe change your strategy accordingly. Absolutely, on yeah. Up. Yeah, it sounds like a really cool system because I can see in the hands of a, a tactically astute player, they're going to already have in their mind during the battle, well, this token could be on the way. Mm. And then know as soon as that, that appears, they either go on a more aggressive approach or something like that. Is yeah. is that something you encounter in playtesting, those kind of things? Yeah, so it... It matters at what point during the turn the, the token comes out. Some of them, the weapon ones, tend to then give you the bonus for the rest of the turn. So if that comes out at the beginning of the turn, then that's great. But if it's at the end of the turn, you might want to choose something else, which is more of an instant effect. Um, cool. I mean, you mentioned earlier that you kind of you saw some things from the community where they had cameras and stuff, and because of that, you worked the rules in. Mm. Do you? Do you like that process of like seeing what's going on with your fans and then changing things accordingly? Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, there's. Uh, I tend to be on the the Facebook group quite a lot, and it's a really nice, friendly community who very helpful to newcomers. Uh, a lot of people who know far more about the subject of, of historical Japan than me. Um, uh, so yeah, it's a great place to get inspiration and ideas um, and yeah I, I free, they're always very happy to get ideas and suggestions from from the fans um, uh, and they've all been helping play test all the scenarios that's the, the stage we're at we're just coming to the end really now um, all these new scenarios have been thoroughly play tested by kind of volunteers from the community who've all been helping and giving me suggestions and how to tweak and change things and that's uh, been a really nice experience. Cool, and has lockdown affected that at all in terms of people being able to play test? Um, well, I, it swings around about, isn't it? Because <laughs> people have had more time to, to paint. Um, uh, anyone who's happy, happy to solo play, then, then <laughs> that hasn't been a problem, but it's been harder to actually get together with people and, and play games. Uh, so. There, there was a early on in in the lock, in lockdown. There was there wasn't much happening in terms of actual play testing, um, but people have kind of come out that side, and we've, I'm getting more and more help over the the last month, really. Um, uh, so that's been really useful. Cool, and uh, you know, not content with doing everything else, uh, you've learned some new skills during lockdown as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I've. Um, thought I'd dabble, dabble into digital sculpting. Um, it's been something that's interested me for ages and I've, I've been through all the process of kind of briefing other sculptors to design miniatures for me. So, um, so I thought I'd have a go. Uh, it seems to be going okay. Um, so I've got a few, few of my sculpts are on the table here which have been 3D printed and painted up for me. Um, uh, and the plan is to get at least some of those on sale kind of roughly in conjunction with the book. Uh, so the, the big, the Azutsu big handheld heavy muskets that I mentioned would probably be some of the first. Very cool. Um, is there anything else you want to tell us about that we haven't covered? Um, I, think, I think we're about there. <laughs> Uh, Any more plans for the future after this already, or are you just uh, focusing on this release? I've got lots more ideas and for new models. There's there's just a lot of scope. Um, I've got an idea to do a a box of baddies. Um, we already did the the unlikely allies set, which is kind of a collection of disparate characters, but they're all kind of 
more or less good guys. So I'm, so my idea is to kind of do the flip side of that and have this eclectic collection <laughs> of ne'er do wells and ruffians and rogues and um, to do something like that. So that's nothing. Nothing's really started apart from sketches so far. But uh, that's that's one of the next things coming. All right. Uh, so yeah, I think that's it. Thank you very much for coming, Graham. Uh, we'll see you soon, no doubt. Thanks very much for having me. It's been great. This video has been brought to you by WI Prime, Wargames Illustrated Magazine's online members club. View more videos or find out more about WI Prime by following these links.